Hello, math class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson three here, angle properties and triangles. You probably just wrote a quiz. I hope that went well. Uh, and in two lessons time, we'll be writing the unit test, uh, hopefully at the end of the second week, if our pace keeps up. Uh, so as you can see, we've got the title, angle properties and triangles. We have the title below, angle properties and triangles, and also in your booklet. On the screen three times actually as you can see it's right over here so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, some rules about triangles I'm going to give them to you right away uh, then we're going to use them throughout the lesson so uh, let's see I'm gonna move my booklet onto here to show you what I want to talk about first so non adjacent interior angles the two angles of a triangle that do not have the same vertex as an exterior angle. So essentially that would be A and B because they are not touching C. And like C is um, connected to this exterior angle because this line seems to extend. So this cannot be a non-adjacent interior angle. Angle A and angle B are non-adjacent. They are not touching the line that extends out. So we just want to know that as a term because these two, knowing these two angles is very different from knowing this angle here. It has very different implications. Um, as far as what you need to know, uh, in any triangle, the interior angles A, B, and C would all equal 180 degrees. And then we have as well this rule down here. The measure of any exterior angle, so that would be the angle DBA. See this, how it's wide open like this. It would be more than 90 degrees, this angle DBA. That angle is always equal to the um, alternate, uh, sorry, non-adjacent interior angle. So A and B added together. That would be BAC and ACB right here. This angle and this angle are equal to this one. So we're not going to use it immediately, but we'll use that uh, in this lesson later on. Let's get to example one. So example one here. Uh, use angle sums to determine the angle measurement. So in the diagram, angle MTH so that's the exterior angle, 155 degrees, uh, is given. Uh, we also have the angle uh, AMT, so that would be 40 degrees. We want to determine, of the, determine the unknown angles, essentially. Uh, so one thing we can do, uh, we can find angle MTA, that is this one right here, MTA, uh, by using the 180 degree rule. We have a line and we have a transversal. So the opposite, we'll have 180 subtract one, uh, 155. So angle MTA is equal to 180 degrees, subtract 155 degrees, and it is then 25 degrees. And we can use our rule that we know with triangles, the uh, interior angles of triangles are equal to 180 to find out what the angle MAT is. So angle MAT, is equal to 180 for the whole triangle and I know one angle is 155 and the other angle I know is pardon me 155 is the exterior angle so that's not one that I know an angle that I know is 40 and the other angle I just found is 25 so I'm subtracting those 180 minus 40 minus 25 angle MAT is then 100 and 15 degrees and again that makes sense it looks like it's over 90 so it is extended out uh, if you have questions about that please let me know um, but what I'd like you to do uh, this might be a little bit tricky and it's all right if we don't understand it right away it's like you don't get it until you see uh, how I've done it after your turn but it's a little bit of a thought experiment that I would like you to try and I'm going to help you along just a little bit so if you're given one interior angle and one exterior angle of a triangle, can we always do what we just did in the previous example and determine all of the angles in the triangle? Uh, so if we're given like a triangle like this, uh, let's see. And we're
we're given the exterior angle. Let's just say it is, let's just say 100. I'm not really sure why I picked 100. But let's say it's 100 and we know that angle. If we know any of these angles, this one, this one, or this one, can we always determine what all the other angles are if I only know one of them? Or is there a situation where you cannot? So uh, if there is a situation where you can't, I'd like you to show it, uh, find out what it is, uh, and then give a little explanation. If you're not sure, um, you know, just, it's okay. Let it play and I'll show you. So if we have this triangle here, and I'm gonna label some sides, we got D, C, B, and A up here. Um, if we're given this angle, if we're given this angle and we're told that it is, I don't know, um, 68, and we're told it's 68 degrees, if we're given that angle, we can solve this. This is, uh, we can use this relationship to find out what this angle is. So 180 minus 100 is equal to 80 degrees for there. Right, and then I can use my 180 degree rule to find out what A is. If it is set up in this way where I'm given B first, that is no problem. I can do it. Uh, if we are have it set up in a way that uh, is a little different like this, so we have our triangle, and we have this angle is, this time it's 101, and then this angle we're given is 79. If we have this angle instead, What can we do? We can't use this exterior angle to find another angle now because we already know that one. And we can't use the 180 degree rule because I need to know two other angles. I only know one. So if we're given this angle, this one cannot be done. So cannot be solved when they are beside each other. Uh, no, no, second angle cannot be found. Second angle cannot up a little bit a second angle cannot be found and if second angle can't be found you can't find the third angle so it's very important which angle we're given if we're given one of the um, non adjacent angles that's no problem if we're given the adjacent angle we cannot solve the rest of the triangle I think we have two more examples and then we are unleashing you onto the practice problems so Example two, use reasoning to determine the relationship between the exterior uh, and interior angle of a triangle. So let's see, I'll put my book here. All right, so let's set up a triangle that looks a little bit different this time. We're going to do a triangle that looks like this and a line there. And I'm going to label this angle D, C, B, that angle A. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you that we have uh, a relationship between angle D and the angles A and B. As I mentioned in the beginning, that exterior angle is equal to the non-adjacent angles added together, and I'm going to prove it to you here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that angle D and angle C added together equal 180 degrees. I don't need to know numbers to know that they equal 180. So D plus C equal to 180 degrees. 180 degrees for a flat line. I can rearrange this a little bit and you're gonna see why I'm going to do this in a little bit. Uh, but if I subtract C from both sides, I'm going to be left with D is equal to 180 degrees subtract the angle C. And again, that's true. Uh, we can find D by taking 180 and subtracting C. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other rule that I know that A, B, and C added all together equal 180 degrees. A plus B plus C equals 180 degrees, right? All the interior angles added together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract C from both sides again, and you'll see why. A plus B is equal to 180 degrees, subtract C. I have two things that are the same. 180 degrees minus C is equal to D. 
180 degrees minus C is equal to A plus B. So because I know that those two equal the same thing, they must equal each other. It is the transitive property again on his way back. The transitive property. Since these two are equal to one another, therefore, A plus B must equal D. Uh, I've proven that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of non adjacent angles. So we've proven that this angle is equal to the sum of this one and this one, those ones added together using the transitive property. If D equals 180 minus C and A plus B equals 180 minus C, they must equal each other. So let's use some of this. I don't know if we actually use that in particular, but we can use these in the problems as we go. So, use reasoning to solve this problem. Determine the measures, angles of NMO, MNO, and QMO. What a mouthful. Okay, let's just write them down. This one, MNO is equal to, okay, so MNO, M, N, O. So that's this angle right here. I've got this transversal. Let's see what I can do. M, N, O. Okay, so I know that uh, these are interior alternate angles, right? This one right here, we've got 67 and this large one that includes 20. So I can find out what this smaller angle is right here if I take 67, which should be this, and subtract 20. So I'll take 67, as I know that it is a um, interior opposite angle, subtract 20, as that part is already taken, to get 47 degrees. So the angle MNO is 47 degrees. Let's see next, the angle NMO, from N to M to O. Okay, so now I see here that if this angle I have found out is 47, I have two of the three angles in the triangle, I can find it what, what uh, NMO is using the 180 degree rule. NMO equals 180, subtract 47, which I just found, subtract 39, which is the other given angle in the triangle, to equal 94 degrees. And let's see, the next one we want to find out is QMO. QMO. Okay, QMO. So if I need I need to find out what maybe this angle is first. QMO. No, I know what this angle is here. So I can see if I have this straight line, L to Q or M to Q. And I know that this angle, 67, I just found out this angle to be 94. I can find out what this angle is uh, by subtracting them both from 180. So the angle QMO is equal to 180, subtract 67, subtract 94, should be pretty small, which is equal to 19 degrees. So that would be the angle QMO. So we've used uh, reasoning, we have found out what each of uh, the given angles are. And you could do this in multiple different ways, several different ways uh, if you want it. You can see that we have an exterior angle, we have an interior angle for this triangle. Uh, we could find out what the others are um, using our usual rules, uh, or the rules that we just, um, should say, just learned. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I believe yes it's time to get down to some practice. So do that practice. Thanks.